Hello and welcome to Continuous Manufacturing Basics. In this video, we want to show you how to conduct a residence time distribution test using a color tracer. The unit operation that we use to show this test setup is a twin screw extruder for wet granulation. The extruder mixes powder with a liquid, the binder, to produce granules, which are then dried. The setup we used here consists of the extruder, a gravimetric feeder, and a pump for the liquid. To measure the response to the color tracer, we place the chute under the extruder outlet. The powder is constantly flowing down, building a stream in the center. We install the camera focused on this evaluation point. It is important to carry out a white balance before the test and have the camera focused at the right position with enough light. The tracer run we carry out is an impulse test. For this type of test, we insert a small amount of tracer at once. We use the red dye. It is important to weigh the exact amount to obtain reproducible results. We introduce the dye at an inlet port of the extruder. It is located adjacent to the inlet for the powder. The mean residence time in the extruder is relatively short. So immediately after we insert the tracer, the first strong impulse comes out. Please consider that we play this video with five times the real speed, because even if the mean residence time is short, we still see long tailing. We evaluated the video using the LAB color room, specifically the A value, which describes the redness of the picture. Here you see the RTD curve resulting from this test. The fluctuation of the curve is quite strong. This is a common effect for this type of test, but still the results are usually quite reliable. If I now try to fit the curve just using the equations we already know, it would look like this. Here I use the equation for the continuous steer tank cascade with a tau of 4.9 seconds and an n of 34. Tau is the mean residence time and n is the number of tanks in the cascade. The fit is quite good, but you can also see that we have a steep increase in the beginning and a long tail in the end, which is not represented well by the fit. Long tailing is always an indicator that you have zones of stagnant flow or material is binding to the equipment surface. This evidently happened here, as you can see on the extruder screws. To get a better representation of the real behavior, a colleague of mine calculated a fit using an advanced fitting method and he was able to fit the tail as well as the steep increase. With this method, we ended up with a tau of 5.18 seconds compared to 4.9 seconds, which we had for the continuous steer tank cascade. So you can see also with the ideal flow models, we get relatively close to the real process. With that, we would like to thank you for your attention and hope you have enjoyed this short introduction to RTD measurement.